<clears throat> Howdy. Hey, how's it going, everybody? We just got out of the final film in the Skywalker saga. Yay. And <laughs> yay. I just rewatched all the Star Wars movies, and you can see the videos on my channel. I just posted stuff on all that. And after all this time, we got an end to this mediocre sequel trilogy with uh, The Rise of Skywalker. And this movie... No, I, I wasn't feeling this one at all. I, I really didn't like it. It's pretty mediocre, right? It, it's such a lackluster, know. mediocre movie. It's like, see, the sequel trilogy had absolutely no planning whatsoever. It was all shoehorn phone together. Uh, Palpatine just kind of thrown in there. There's no explanation for how he comes back. Like, literally nothing at all. And Palpatine's like my favorite Star Wars character. And they made him just not cool in this movie. I love Palpatine, but man, what they do with him in this movie is so, like, nothing he looked like the penguin kind of like yeah he Dane just, devito's penguin like i don't know what they were trying to accomplish here yeah i i didn't like the design of him he looks stupid yeah. uh this movie is nothing but MacGuffins. i call it MacGuffin the movie so like oh we gotta get this wayfinder and then we gotta go get this dagger and then we gotta go get this other thing and then we gotta go get this other thing and then we gotta go get this other thing which be sure to bring your two lightsabers for palpatine right your two lightsabers <laughs> which you just somehow have <laughs> Oh my god, This the, the sequel trilogy had absolutely no planning. Um, it, I was kind of feeling like, this was, I feel like I'm playing through, a, watching a video game, in a, in a way, like, but like, not like the most engaged, I felt kind of like a little bit of Uncharted, because we're Uncharted, you're just like, okay, we have to go to this location, we have to go to this location. It just felt like an excuse to have just action sequences and locations here and here, we're like, okay, we want to travel to here, oh, okay, we want to travel to here. It didn't really feel like a cohesive story, Palpatine's like, I'm behind this whole thing the whole time, like... Uh, Supreme Leader Snoke was not really anybody significant. I just cloned and made him somehow, uh, which is really dumb. You find out like the first two minutes of the movie, Kylo Ren's the Supreme Leader, and now we have the Final Order, which is a dumb name. What's the deal with like the people in the Final Order? Like you know, it's like all those people who are just watching like this unfold. Like who are these people? Never. There's never no, revealed. Nothing, never really revealed anything because J.J. Abrams. See what happened <laughs> was the Last Jedi came out, and Ryan Johnson just basically. Um, <laughs> I, I know the last Jedi makes you sick. Yeah, <laughs> the last Jedi came out, and basically Ryan Johnson just kind of took everything and just threw it all away. I'll give the last Jedi this over this movie, though. It was, I hate to say this, but it was a lot more focused than this one because this one was just this was ADD the movie. It's like we gotta hurry up and get here. Things are just kind of cut together. Just it's just rushing through it because they have to like basically like uh we don't really have any big setup for a third movie because last Jedi when it ended it felt kind of like a final movie in the trilogy and they're just like. What story do we have? Uh, we're in a tr we have to do the trilogy format, and we'll just kind of throw something together. Like even within the first minute, it's like uh, the, the emperor's back. Well, how and why? I don't know. The emperor's just back because, well, JJ basically run out of other things to pull from other movies, so he had to bring back the emperor. It definitely but, feels like a forty-five minute movie. They just kind of like extended it with these random scenes. Like they go, oh, we have to go hard unlock C three PO's language. We have to go find his dagger, and it's just, nothing happens in it, it's just... Nothing happens, then when you finally get to the final battle, it's very uninteresting, it's, you really don't learn too much new, I mean, the only, I mean, this whole movie's plot was leaked basically four months ago, because my, my theory is that there's people in, within Lucasfilm who are not happy with what's happened to Star Correct. Wars, so it's, it's probably an employee who leaked, like, all the details... And people were just sharing them like crazy. Unlike something like Avengers Endgame, where people are like, don't spoil it, don't spoil it. This one, most people just don't give a shit. They're just seeing it just to see how it kind I of I mean, ends. what's the really the spoil in this movie? I mean, doesn't everyone kind of just know Ray's going to win? Like, isn't that... Right, I mean, I guess spoilers <laughs> is failure. You know, who cares? Uh, I, uh, Ray, uh, Ray Palpatine. And the, the ending to this movie is insulting, too. Like, a lot of this movie is insulting. Bringing back Palpatine just because you have no other villain is so incredibly lazy. And it, it's very lazy how they bring him back. They kind of just shoehorn him in like, oh, it was really behind this the whole time. I mean, we know. The reason we know Palpatine, it, it, it's just kind of phoned together. It's not fully planned. was because Colin Trevorrow has come out. He was the original director of Episode Nine. He said, I was never going to bring in Palpatine. It was never an idea I had. So it goes to show you that, no, this was J.J.'s idea. They had a kind of trying to retrofit it. J.J. was not supposed to come back for nine, but Kathleen Kennedy pretty much got on her knees and begged for him to come back and finish this thing because they fired Trevor O. And then Ryan Johnson just kind of screwed the pooch on a lot of things. And, you know, J.J. is just a mystery box guy because that's all he does is mystery boxes. It's a nice looking movie for a lot of it, but a lot of it's just kind of just an obscene amount of light, lightning flashes. 
The force makes no sense anymore. Uh, yeah, apparently they can instant transmission, Dragon right. Ball Z style. Yeah, just... they can just instant transmission objects across the universe now. I, I wonder, like, I'm like, okay, you can just kind of instant transmission. Space travel is just irrelevant now. Because, like, oh, no, but only objects can do that. But you can somehow... I, it doesn't make sense anymore. The, the force, like, I understand, like, you want to kind of develop the force's abilities and stuff. But where was this... In all the other movies. This would have been helpful. But. Right, right, right. Like, oh, I can just instant transmission this thing here. And then somehow the Death Star is still somewhat intact for a lot of it. I don't understand. The thing blew the fuck up. In space. It blew in space. Up. It's gone. Bye-bye. There's, no, there's no gravitational effects in space that would pull the down to Endor. So, you know. How right. Did, how's it there? How is anything <laughs> happening in this movie? How did all those ships form for the final order? It's such a dumb name, too. Like, uh, you were the first order. Well, now we're the... Final order. It's like the most remote planet you could think of, like and the way they to... design it. And they just have thousands of Star Destroyers there. No one seemed to notice. Right. There's no civilization there. Just barren planet. They just magically built these things. Right. And they're just like, uh, I've been controlling this the whole time. I'm like, well, bullshit. How did you survive getting yeah. blown up? How? And th this movie, Palpatine, he, he feels his character has progressed from more of a politician to a cult leader in this movie, which is a very like odd thing right. to do. Like, I, I don't and, know. and then he's just like at some point he's like the life force, yeah, force healing force. abilities now. Yeah, it, it just seems like we're gonna sell you a bunch of comics so you can learn about how Palpatine got here. We're not gonna really tell you how. I, I guess the most frustrating thing with this trilogy is, is you had two villains with Kylo Ren and. Uh, Snoke, and then you killed Snoke for no good reason still to this day, and you just kind of made Kylo Ren, Ren a wimp, so it's just, it seems very rushed, the lazy third act villain, the Palpatine, is just kind of Ian, save us, see what you can do. Right, and even, they don't give Ian McDermott much chance to, like, chew the scenery like he does, because he looks, he's kind of strapped to this device, and he looks awful, like, they, I guess they forgot that he had facial scarring and all that, but Correct. somehow he's still, I don't know how the fuck he's alive, did they clone him? <coughs> I don't Unless know. I got by the books, because we all know there's going to be like three Palpatine books that come out, or a comic or something. Uh, no, I don't want to have to read a fucking book to understand a movie. Explain it in the goddamn movie, it's so fucking lazy. I, I see. I think it's the difference between this and the Lucas ones. Lucas ones were just telling a story. <laughs> this one's like, we're going to tell you a story, but if you want to know all of it, you you're gotta like nine ninety nine out. <laughs> right, George Lucas, you know, I, I feel kind of bad for George Lucas at this point, because he actually did have sequel story treatments. But in Lucasfilm, when Kathleen Kennedy like lied right to his face, like, oh yeah, we're gonna use all this stuff. And then they just kind of threw it all away. And he, just, he was not even at the premiere for this movie. It goes to show that he just thought it was a mess. I remember hearing, I was hearing stories, I don't know if these are true or not, but apparently this movie had severe reshoots. Kind of like, this is basically, you know what this reminds me of? Like the DCEU with the Zack Snyder movies. Cause yeah. the first movie, Force Awakens, Man of Steel, you know, the relaunch of a franchise. The second movie was Batman vs Superman and Last Jedi, which are super divisive movies, yeah. which, you know, and then the follow-up movies, like trying to make up for the previous one and just kind of shoehorning things together, all sorts of reshoots, crazy different visions, and we get the final product just like this. And ironically, both have the same screenwriter attached to it. So studio meddling with this one, uh, obviously didn't suffer as much as uh, Justice League, did because the like the CGI is looks completely unfinished in Justice League, but like this is so tacked on together. Palpatine just seems even more powerful than ever, despite getting blown the fuck up. Uh, his lightning can apparently do all this other stuff, and it makes you wonder why he never did this before in any other of the movies. He's like, oh, because I, plot armor. Because plot armor, exactly. Because yeah, and, and fucking Revenge of the Sith, like he's dying against Mace Windu. Uh, just like a simple lightsaber, but yet he can take down an entire fleet with just his lightning powers. And you know what? Where was Yoda with his stupid force lightning that he used to blow stuff up before in the last movie? His, his, Palpatine's force lightning doesn't seem very effective either, because it's just like he kind of stick your lightsaber out there and block it. So I don't, I don't really know how it's, powerful this is, because Ray doesn't seem like she had very much difficulty. I am all the Jedi, and you hear voices from the other actors who just kind of forcibly did ADR. I, I feel like there isn't a lot of stuff in this movie that was cut, because things just kind of just transition, like they jump to it, like Rey's taking Kylo's ship, and then all of a sudden the next shot is her at Luke's planet, and it's just getting destroyed, I'm like, what? Just kind of stuff like that, and you just, it makes you wonder, like, why? Introducing these characters and then never developing, like, the, the one on the planet who helped them unlock C-3PO's mind. You never you never see from her again. You kind of just see she gives you a few lines and then goes away. They never right. It's just elaborate like, on who this person is or anything. 
Right. I mean, there's some decent action sequences, but by the end of it, you're completely like burnt out and you just, it's sensory overload to a point where I'm just like, I didn't care about the final battle. Lando Calrissian shows up. It's cool to see Lando again, but he really just, just kind of shows up and that's about it. You know what we never got from Disney in any of the five movies they made? A good lightsaber scene. And this one still never. No, the best lightsaber, the best lightsaber scene is in, what was it? Uh, Rogue One. And that's simply because Darth Vader just murders everyone. Rogue One is still by far the best of all these yeah, movies. By like, far, I've, not even close. It's, it's not even close. None of them come remotely close. I'll give the movie this though. JJ clearly hated The Last Jedi. You can kind yeah. of tell. And, like even he's kind of thrown some shade more recently in interviews. And this is kind of like this is such a disjointed trilogy because it's a battling between two completely polar opposite directors. You have JJ Abrams who has his style. You have Ryan Johnson who has his thing, just in the middle. And it's just going to be a mess. And it's just a shame that there's absolutely no real good cohesive plan with this. Because unlike, say, Marvel, who has a Kevin Feige, who, like, you know, not every movie is going to work in the MCU. Like, some of them are pretty mediocre. But a lot of them are really solid. But that's a clearly, like, that's a well-oiled machine. Like, it's very well planned out. Kevin Feige has a giant map of everything. And everything runs pretty smoothly for the most part in the MCU. This, Lucasfilm, there's none of that. Like, they've, how many directors have they fired? They fired uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller. They pretty much just fired Gareth Edwards, but he kind of played ball in the end. Uh, they lost Josh Trank. They lost... Did they the fire Ryan? Ryan Johnson. Oh, I'm making my trilogy, but then Kathleen Kennedy says they're not going to be doing trilogies. And they, so he got fired, essentially. <laughs> pretty much what he's saying, but he's not officially. I don't I don't know if Ryan Johnson's going to make his trilogy of Star Wars movies. I don't probably know. I, I, if you're Disney, you probably don't want that guy anywhere near Star Wars, if considering all the divisiveness that's happening. I don't know if they could do this, but these movies seem like they definitely need to be reshot in a more coherent storyline. You could probably keep seven, but if you could redo eight and nine. Yeah, the, the best that, of this trilogy is The Force Awakens. Even though it's kind of just an all right movie, it's... It's not the. It's not crap like this stuff. Right, because it basically just took the same template as A New Hope. Yeah. And it set up things like there's more focus, it spent more time fleshing out character. This one's just like. It's just sensory overload. It's just. There's, it's rushing through so much stuff so quick. Like the first 50 minutes of this movie, it's like. It's like they're trying to set things up for a whole other movie. There's like five movies like thrown into this thing at once. Uh, and it's just too much. It, it just too much at once and you're just left wondering like why what what happened with this thing it's like they really didn't have a it felt like they just kind of just strung it all together they're like oh we got to do this we got to do that and we're trying to end the saga and by the end of it you just don't care and it's just the saddest part is i just don't care and i wanted to care i compare this to like return of the jedi all that emotion all that build up a clear story arc the prequels revenge of the sith I care what's happening. Like the the lightsaber battles are epic. Like the final moments between Obi Wan and Anakin are epic. The storyline it's leading to something. George Lucas had things planned out. <laughs> this is not planned out at all. It's just it's just throw shit at the wall. This is the most disjointed trilogy I think I've ever seen. It is kind of shocking how a multi billion dollar franchise like this could be just so disorganized and have no real clear right game it's, plan for a trilogy of movies that you know could lay the foundation for an additional trilogy and really infantile number of films exactly there's just so much that they could have done but they just they just didn't do it and it's just it's a real real shame and i just can't believe it like this is there's no point i don't care anymore I'm not going to see this one again anytime soon. Probably just wait for home video if, if that. Star Wars, I'm not going to say it's dead because I guess The Mandalorian is doing well, but... I mean, Disney did, has proven it can make okay Star Wars movies. Rogue One is still good, but, you know... Rogue One and Steve. Solo is crap. Uh, Solo is crap, but... <laughs> this one, I don't know if it really gotten a fair shot, though, which is the one thing I will say to its defense, because you have to conclude a trilogy and you have... You have to a conclude movie. a saga. You know what? Well, fuck well but it's not even that. You have episode eight that just destroyed all momentum, which they is really They should have the... just done, like, at least two more. They should have just done ten episodes. They, they really should have just, like, been like, okay, we kind of screwed up here. Let's just not throw so much stuff into one movie. Let's take our time. Like, the Emperor, how is he back? Why? Like, that's not, that doesn't feel like the, that's not set up in any of the other movies. It's... Well, they had an hour of waste of time in this movie. They could have done something with it instead of having these stupid planetary chases with characters no one cares about exactly that's all it is it's just planetary chases for a, a fucking object that looks like some little toy prop Ugh, yeah. 
Oh, this is stupid. Just the I, C3PO, the Sith language barrier, is still one of the stupidest plot twists. It's I can such remember. a dumb waste of time. Oh, because of the ruling of the Senate, I can't say the forbidden language of the Sith. So we have to waste 10, 15 minutes going to a fucking thing just to have Developing them. characters who never appear again in the movie. Right, 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 right. I just... <laughs> it just felt like a waste of time. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just didn't care. Luke Skywalker, I, I'll give him this. It felt more like classic Luke, which was nice. Just for the two minutes he's on screen. Leia's on screen more than him, surprisingly. I know Carrie Fisher passed away, so I... They they somehow did a pretty good job wa waving in like old scenes that they shot with her, kind of just inserting her into the movie. They did that pretty well. Like it does come across like okay, we, we know what happened with Carrie Fisher. Although when uh, Princess Leia inevitably passes, it feels kind of just like I don't know. Where, but you have to understand like the background of it and all that. But yeah, like um, do I like this more than Last Jedi? I can sit through this more than Last Jedi in a way, but Last Jedi had more because Last Jedi to me is more insulting to what it does. This one is just like. It, it's not nearly as focused as that. Force Awakens is the best of this trilogy because, like, I felt like there was more of a story there. But this one, I just didn't, just didn't care. If you, Raylo shippers, I hope you're happy. You got that hokey moment there. Yay. The power of love saved Ray. Yeah, there were some really corny. The power of love stuff and Ben. This the togetherness factors. Yeah, it it, it comes across as like a cheap Hallmark film at points. Oh, oh, the shippers are gonna just love it to death. So I, even though I feel the, like Yu-Gi-Oh, like oh, hey guys, we're stronger together. You know, just the, trust the heart of the cards. That mm. that was this movie. This Tr movie. Trust that you're not alone in the galaxy, and that your friends will come and save you at the end of the day. And it's just all it'll all take care of itself. It's really what the, the plot of this movie is. The, the plot of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. All right, uh, what are your ratings, Sean? Uh, I think I'll give this one three or four. Three I'll give nine. it... Uh, Last Jedi gets like a like a two out of ten for me. Solo gets a one. Uh, this one, I'll give it a four. I was going to give it a four, but they hate The Last Jedi as much as I do, so I'll give it a five. That's fair. That's fair. This and, is just... Uh, this is just... It's nothing all that special. <laughs> I just felt really nothing by the end of it. I didn't, there was no emotion. And I'm just yeah, sitting there like, wow... I'm not really caring at all. Like, I'm not, like, getting sad or choked up by anything. They're throwing the member berries at you, and it just is not working. JJ's trying, and I understand, like, you're inherited kind of a mess, and you're trying to please all these things. That's not an easy job for sure, but, you know, George Lucas had a, an outline for each movie, and, you know, I know people give George Lucas a lot of crap for some stuff, too, and he, a lot of stuff he definitely deserves some things, but he did Grace. get better as his trilogy. He had a focus... Like, there's focus in a lot of it, but there was a plan. But this, no, there's... It's, it's hard to believe that they couldn't just, you know, rip some expanded universe stories. There's only, like, oh, 70 but, blocks. But, but, but remember, from. we don't have any source material. <laughs> have, they had a unique opportunity where they could kind of just pick and choose the stuff in the expanded universe they like and then just throw out the crap they don't want. But, you know, just better throw it all away and then just kind of at the end Just make up your own stuff. Team. Well, yeah. actually, Palpatine coming back was a huge story, but but there was not. there was no build up to it at no. all in this. It was just like the Dead Risen. Palpatine somehow does this. So there's the First Order, there's the Final Order, which are two separate factions. There's Resistance. I, I don't feel. I don't get it. The movie even all, like led you to believe there could be a battle between the First Order and the Last Order. I'm like, that seems more interesting than what I'm watching right now. What? Yeah, I never really have. I would have liked to see maybe a civil war with him. You know what? There's a lot more better stuff out there that you could go see. Uh, I just, I'm just not happy with this movie. I'm not happy with this trilogy at all. The only Star Wars movie of the new ones I liked really was Rogue One. Force Awakens is all right. Last Jedi, I really did not like. This one I really didn't like either. Um, it's disappointing because they could do, no, they could have just done much better with it. And right, the fact that- The shop stuff's in the foot a lot. Exactly. So like I said, there's some neat stuff. The lightsaber battles, even the lightsaber battle, like it was like there was no music and it was just kind of just they're happening there's no real suspense to it because she's already beaten him several times and Han Solo even comes back as a force ghost for I guess he's a force ghost or in his head or whatever having Ray defeat Red in the first movie is one of the biggest mistakes they made right opinion. the fact that she beat him so she beat him without any training and now like even with training she struggles against him which yeah it, it, the the lightsaber action sequences really were just a mess this whole time like 
They, they really should have did the hero's journey with Rey. Like, she could lose the Kyle Ren or kind of escape or whatever, but they just, you know, want to make her overpowered, I guess, for whatever reason. Whatever. So. I'm just I'm just not feeling this movie. So, uh, yeah, those are our thoughts on The Rise of Skywalker, the end of this Star Wars saga. Like and subscribe to his channel, as Thank always. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for joining me. It's good to have a big Star Wars fan. I remember, because when we went to see The Last Jedi, uh, you were so hyped for that movie. And just seeing you kind of, like, I was all right on The Force Awakens, because we've seen all the Disney Star Wars movies together. Force Awakens, I thought, was pretty good. I liked that movie. Right. Uh, I remember so. when we were leaving, the, the going into The Last Jedi, you are like, this could be the greatest thing ever. And just seeing you just heartbroken by the end of it. Well, the moment they killed Snoke, it was the moment I was like, wow, these guys have just no direction in <laughs> this movie franchise. No, the, the moment where Princess Leia flies her out. Oh, <laughs> I, was, I was willing to forgive that the rest of the movie was good. That was and no, that was And sad. then what they did with Luke Skywalker, too. Oh, See, I'm just gonna, I bring it back old wounds. Yeah, you know, I, I only saw that movie once. Never never again. Just, never again. <laughs> never again. Nope, can't can't do it this this one i can watch again it, it's not great but it's not it is more watchable than the last it's not gonna jedi. cause you physical pain well actually I, it, it might cause you physical pain but not yeah. the last jedi levels. and i just like i said another thing too i think i i don't know if i brought this up but palpatine coming back just completely negates everything that darth vader's sacrifice did in return of the jedi it's just a big dump on it. even george lucas like palpatine's dead but somehow J.J. brings it back because they had no real plan. My, my favorite thing, too, is if Palpatine has the ability to clone himself, what's stopping them from making, like, eight more movies with Palpatine in it? I don't There's know. really nothing. They could just, as long as he is willing to keep coming out there. They don't even need him. They could just make Palpatine random characters. Like, I guess it's implied that he was Snoke this whole time. I, I don't know. Read just, whatever book they're going to sell you, but you'll find out. Just dumb stuff. Just dumb stuff. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Uh... Take care now. Bye bye then. Sayonara. Sayonara. This movie sucks. <laughs> and the next thing I'm going to go see is another movie that's going to be terrible, but it should be more interesting. I'm going to be seeing Cats tomorrow. I. Uh, no. God, I'm <laughs> trying. Gonna, uh, <laughs> all right. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Peace.